Hello guys, so we are talking about the same topic here, anterior open bite. But in this case, I'm gonna go a little bit further in our treatment planning, meaning I'm not using extraction, I'm not using elastics. In this case, what I want is to correct the skeletal pattern. So for that, I need to address this case using orthogenetic surgery. And in those cases with skeletal open bite, which are going to see the characteristics that dictate that this case is skeletal, not just dental. In skeletal open bite, we need to have a more precise approach for that. Because sometimes we want to correct that by means of compensation. And yes, sometimes it is possible, but most of the time, if we really have a skeletal open bite, this may not be possible. So now, anterior open bite correct by means of orthogenetic surgery. So let's move on. In this case, skeletal open bite, it has some characteristics that shows to us that this case may not be well treated using a compensatory treatment, neither using extrusion of anterior teeth nor using intrusion of posterior teeth, because sometimes you see many people doing that, doing intrusion of posterior teeth. But these characteristics of anterior open bite, skeletal anterior open bite, may not make it possible to do this kind of compensatory treatment because if we do the extrusion here in this case what should happen i will show more uh incisor during smile or in list in a uh, rest lip position which is not good so we are having very bad outcome and if we do the intrusion of posterior teeth and we have a big mandible which is very common we can use cephalometrics for giving the numbers. For example, the triangle of McNamara can show this, these numbers. And if we have a mandible which is not compatible with the size of the maxilla, and we do the intrusion of posterior teeth here, what we would have is a, this mandible going forward. So in fact, we are just we are transforming this case in a prognatic case because in fact, this patient he or she, they have this mandible with a bigger size, but it's downwards and backwards position. That's why we can see that in this condition. So sometimes it may not be indicated for us to do this kind of intrusion of posterior teeth when we have anterior open bite, skeletal anterior open bite. If we have it with a short mandible, it's very good. It's very good because the mandible goes forward and upwards changing the profile in a positive way. But in those cases in which those patients, they have this big mandible from point uh, condylion to the point pogonion, we have this size increased, we can't do that. Otherwise, we're going to create another kind of malocclusion, another problem for the patient, which is showing more mandible, more pogonion. So we have a lot of characteristics that shows us, they show us that this case is mainly uh, skeletal with a better approach going to surgery than doing the compensation, okay? And other components of the skeletal open bite here, as you can see, and we have many articles showing that. Bjork has a good uh, uh, approach of this uh, characteristics. And here we have one case, and I'm gonna show to you another situation which is very important to pay attention. If we are planning to do the surgery and we're preparing this patient for orthogenetic surgery by means of ortho orthodontic preparation, there are some things that we need to pay attention. And this example you're going to see. We can do the intrusion of posterior teeth more than the intrusion of anterior teeth, which we call the differential impaction of the maxilla going more upwards in posterior than anterior, and it will change the inclination of anterior teeth. So we need to pay attention in this kind of situation and discuss with our surgeon what is the surgery that he or she is planning for this case. If we are going to intrude posterior teeth more than anterior teeth, we are changing the inclination of anterior teeth. So if we have a good inclination before doing the surgery and patients go to the surgery with this kind of treatment planning, surgical planning, we are going to intrude more posterior than anterior, and we are changing stealing inclination of anterior teeth. So if we don't prepare this, 
patient will have to do another surgery. But this, the surgeon will need to approach the anterior segment with torque, meaning we need to, he or she will need to do the, the three piece of theotomy, the anterior segment, just to change the inclination of anterior teeth because it will be to a uh, very low inclination, which is very bad for the lip as we know. So here we see that we are changing this inclination and if we go more and more with differential impaction, we have more change. Same thing with the mandible, when we have the outer rotation of the mandible, we need to understand what's going to happen to the incisor position in relation to the, to the uh, mandibular plane, okay? We can do this by means of understanding the pre-surgical procedure. So if we have this, we're changing and changing, which sometimes can favor us, but sometimes it may not. So we need to discuss with the surgeon what is the approach for this kind, specific kind of surgery, and anticipate that. In this case here, as you can see, we didn't change the inclination of anterior upper and lower teeth because we knew that during surgery it will change it will change with that differential impaction it may seem here too much before the surgery but after surgery with the impaction of posterior teeth and the outer rotation of the mandible those inclinations they were corrected not because of orthodontic preparation and if we don't pay attention to that we may want because of the huge inclination of anterior teeth we may want to do this correction before surgery but it will be, be very bad for the outcome of the case okay so anticipation anticipation is the name of the game understanding what's going to happen during surgery and anticipate that doing what we need to do orthodontic treatment planning and then going accordingly okay so now we see before and here we have what's was planned for this patient with differential impaction and outer rotation of the mandible. So we kept the inclination. And then you can see here that the patient is prepared for orthogonatic surgery. And there is one situation here that I want to call your attention about. This is here. Sometimes we see people saying we need to go and bend first and second molar. Not necessary. First molar, yes, but sometimes in these cases, in this situation, when we do that before, because we have a uh, skeletal open bite, we have this step between first and second molar. And when we put the second molar in since the beginning in the uh, leveling and alignment, what happens is we extrude very fast that second molar and create a trauma that may uh, put in danger that second molar because of this constant contact between upper and lower second molars, only them, and we use this, this trauma is going to happen in this area here where, in which the bone is not that rigid, okay? And to, so the tuberosity of the maxilla, the bone is very, very uh, thin and it may compromise this case, okay? So we can do that later. We do this by means of uh, in the case here, we use step bands for that and we can correct that later with this. So it's not completely necessary to use the second upper molar. This is something used just to, uh, especially nowadays, I mean, we just don't wait till the preparation is completely ready so we can send it to the, send the case to the surgeon. We do that very, we do that earlier nowadays because we can anticipate the surgery, as you know. So we can do this, and after surgery, we can correct those details, especially in posterior segment. Just a, something that I use, you can use differently, it's okay, I'm just giving you a tip, okay? So here it is, and we see the outcome, and this patient before and after, uh, evaluation pre-surgery, after surgery, and two years after surgery, keeping the occlusion uh, in its condition. You see that we have a little bit of relapse here, but we are not doing any, anything for this now because we are two years, we are here two years after surgery and we still think it's stable. And after surgery and two years after 
surgery. Here it is. So that's what I wanted to show to you. Another approach for anterior open bite, skeletal open bite. So everything here is about treatment planning, understanding the case, diagnose the case, and to do the correct and the proper treatment planning for that. And knowing what's going on in surgery, we can anticipate the bad side effects, discussing with our surgeon and giving for that specific case a unique look, okay? So we can do the better treatment for that patient. So guys, that's it. See you soon. Bye-bye.